But moving on and, and figuring out a solution then, in one of your podcast episodes, you state that as a wave of silence spread across the planet during lockdown, reconnecting us all with the calming sounds of nature as human noise reportedly fell with 5%. How can we prevent going back now? And what is the government doing to raise awareness and decrease it? And whose responsibility is it? Uh, that's a really good question. Um, that thing we talked about there about the wave of silence which spread around the world and decreased the volume of the world by 50%. Being a, a drummer who was in a band and, you know, my guitarist had those amplifiers we're all most people will be familiar with that scene in spinal tap where the guy goes my amplifier goes up to 11 not just 10 it goes up to 11 <laughs> it's a great scene but anyway most amplifier dials go up to 10 and so what's effectively happened is the volume dial on the planet has gone from 10 down to 5 during lockdown and the big question we have to ask is do we want it to go all the way back up to 10 again or how can we keep it that how can we keep that volume down that, that volume at five for as long as we can. But to understand the answer to that question, you have to look at the three biggest causes of noise, human generated noise, and why did it go down from 10 to five? And the three biggest factors were air travel, road traffic, and construction. These three things are the three things which cause the most noise. Now, air travel, well, that went down to five because people weren't flying. But in order to keep that at five, I'm hoping I, I have a very good friend is like a brother to me, but he used to fly to Japan, literally to sign a letter. You know, he was flying to Japan all the time. What does he what's he had to do during lockdown? Zoom calls. And he said, I don't know if I'm ever going to fly to Japan again. Not only is that good for the planet if we reduce flying, but it's certainly good for reducing noise level. I think that if we can reduce unnecessary flights that people used to go on, that they now recognize, hold on, I can do this remotely, that's going to be great. So that will help keep things closer to five. It won't, I'm not saying it will stay at five, it, but hopefully it won't have to go all the way back up to 10 again. Same goes for road travel. You know, I talked earlier about Deloitte doing a poll where 32% of people are going to work from home post pandemic. That's a, that's, a, that's a third of the workforce. And if a third, that, if that third of the workforce used to be in their cars driving debt to work, that's also helping to keep the dial at five. The third one was construction. And this is, we're passionate about them all at QuietMark, but this is something we're looking very closely at at, at QuietMark. You know, there was a saying the government said, build, build, build uh, before the pandemic. They were looking to build more housing. That was a famous quote where there's questions and discussion in the building sector now. Will this become renovate, renovate, renovate? There's many different stories where businesses that had huge amounts of real estate for their businesses are moving away from them. I read that pret a had a huge head office. They're moving out. I know that Sony had many different offices down um, Great Portland Street, uh, sorry, uh, Great Marlborough Street near Liberties in London. They're reducing, I think, from three to one building. So much office space, you know, top shops not going to be used. Shops are emptying because of the way the trend that has moved towards online shopping. That was going on for a long time, but it's accelerated during lockdown. So, Yes, build, build, build will happen, but there could be a lot of renovate as these spaces become disused. But even if we do do build, 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 do we, can we reduce the noise made by construction? Um, one of the guests on our podcast is a chap called Mike Jacob from Kiss House, who builds houses in the passive house uh, style. And he is looking at developing technologies and processes which quieten and reduce the noise generated by construction. As I said, with the mindset, uh, you know, looking at Copenhagen versus America, it's a mindset how you approach it. Building construction, one of the loudest parts of building construction is the groundwork, the cement and so on that gets, to, that gets done and all the trucks driving into that area. But Mike was talking to us on the show about doing a lot of the groundwork off site. So you do it in an industrial estate in the middle of nowhere and you drive a lot of it to the area where the building's being erected rather than doing it all in that building area where it might be adjoining neighborhoods and creating a great deal of disturbance. There's always going to be noise from construction but if more construction moves into renovation and if more of the construction takes place off site we can reduce the noise emitted by construction and also help to keep that closer to five than going back up to ten but it comes from making an effort 
And when, when you say uh, rebuilding it, I mean, as I said, whose responsibility is it? Is it the government? Well, is it the brands? Or is it that the, the us humans, we have to complain? Well, we have to complain, I think. I think, let's face it, let's be honest, looking at, it doesn't matter what political party you support, when did you really see any politician on television saying, we're going to reduce noise? They'll talk about increasing spending in their manifestos. They talk about various things, but noise during party political debates and processes, noise is very rarely on the agenda. And you only have to look at something like the Grenfell, the awful Grenfell building disaster, which uh, happened because of the you know poor materials that were being used. And now, after some after people have died and a disaster has happened, there's now new laws about the, the types of insulation materials that you can use to build certain buildings. Unfortunately, and we, we see too much too many instances here historically that a disaster has to happen before mm. something gets done sadly, about it. Sadly, that's the it's whole true thing though, isn't COVID, it? right? We needed COVID to realize that we need a quieter world. In, in many ways we did, you know, the silencing, and that's an important thing you just said there, Jazz. When the noise reduced, suddenly we could hear nature a lot more, okay? The nature which had been masked by those three things, air travel, road traffic, and construction, Sun, people said, oh my God, the birds have got so much louder. I can hear the wind in the trees. I can hear the sound of the waves. And it wasn't that nature had got louder, but it was that human generated noise, which was masking these natural sounds had gone away. And one of the things that the Financial Times said at the very beginning of the first lockdown was, is a reconnection with nature the antidote to our fears in these strange, unprecedented times? And one of the things we've seen grow massively over this past year is this reconnection to nature, the increase in biophilic design awareness, and the well-being of, of uh, nature, you know. Um, but I think, you know, in terms of what who's doing something about it, yes, there are laws. There's we talked earlier about the noise abatement uh, uh, act, you know, and recognizing that if you exceed certain sound levels, you can be penalized for it. But again, we need to lobby for it. So it's you know, it's taken Greta Thunberg and people who re relate to what Greta Thunberg has said to think twice about buying plastic bottles to reduce the plastic pollution in the ocean to do to change their lifestyles to help slow down the increase in temperature on the planet you know it sometimes takes an ind individuals to make to put that pressure on government mm -hmm. and say we've had enough and the government suddenly look and think we can either ignore what this person's doing and you know, not sign the, pa the Paris Agreement, or we can sign the Paris Agreement and make an effort to do something about it. Um, but it, people pressure can apply that to the government. They, you know, this is what John Connell did in 1959. It's not new. He said things have got too loud, and he lobbied to get the sound, the noise abatement act through Parliament. That still exists. But I think that the New York example, where we said people just accept it what needs to happen and through what the work that quiet mark does through articles like david owens one in the new yorker saying noise pollution is it the next big pollution looking at the work that the world health organization is doing saying it's the second biggest killer recognizing that the biggest complaint numbers to councils are noise related mm -hmm. noise is growing on the agenda you know is it the next big pollution is it you know we've been talking about plastic and global warming. is noise the next one and Certainly, with what we're doing at Quiet Mark and what we do with the Quiet Mark podcast, what we've done before I joined the company, Poppy was uh, producing a film called Pursuit for Silence. She was working on a film about people who've dedicated their lives to finding silence in the world, whether it's forest bathing in Japan or whether it's a chap who's taken a vow of silence to travel from one side of, the, of America to the other, promising not to utter a world, to reconnect with silence in a really busy world and the interesting thing is that as you said covid has almost forced that in fact one thing i read and i just want to share this with you i read an article in the guardian and it was about pret a manger and uh the ceo of pret a manger was talking about it and he said that when people see the pret a manger bag they that it's emblematic of a time they don't want to return to when people were stop going to the office and they started to work from home, they, they stopped, just like the noise stopped. And they thought, 
my my life had gone out of control it wasn't it wasn't just noise it was chaos and they recognized that they used to get off the train buy the sandwich go to their desk and they didn't even taste the sandwich because they were doing emailing they were looking at instagram they were getting on with stuff since lockdown i now have more meals at home with my family i'm enjoying the taste of my food i'm doing nicer walks i'm doing things that the commute used to deny me and i think that um people will value the quiet they'll love the fact that it's gone back to five it has been an antidote to their fears they're liking the reconnection with nature and if things do get too loud again and do get out of hand again maybe collectively and we call it the quiet revolution like i said earlier quite much but maybe more people will protest and say we think things have got too loud we want the government to do more about it and hopefully they will that, that was exactly what I was going to say. What I love about quiet market is that it gives the power also to the people that forces the companies to understand that the change of consumer behavior has changed because their needs right now is to have a more balanced and quieter life. And then the companies has to adapt to that or people won't stop you know, buying their products anymore. <laughs>